G'day everyone, Mitch Williams here for HFNL Media, taking a look at all the round 16 action. There was plenty of footy in that ball, and I'm looking forward to recapping it all. First in footy, we head to the Cobden Rec Reserve for the Hampton League live match of the day, where Cobden took on Port Ferry. The Bombers came away with the Chocolates beating Seagulls by 26 points, which now means that Port Ferry can't make the top five and can't play finals. Michael Coronius and Thomas Spokes kicked three apiece for the Bombers, helping their side get the win. While Jason Rowan was Port Ferry's only multiple goal scorer, kicking two for the away side, taking his season tally to 54. With only two games left in the season, this win from Cobden has secured them a top five finish and they will now play finals. Back to Warrnambool now at the Friendlies Over, where South Warrnambool hosted North Warrnambool in an absolute cracker that had a lot of finals feeling about it. North Warrnambool came away with a tight win by four points, helping them stay in contention for a top three finish to secure a second chance come finals time. North Warrnambool's Jared Lewis was their best player after an impressive game down back. The utility has been played in the back line for most of the season, which is paying dividends. Jack Birmingham was also one of their better players after an impressive game through the middle that also saw him be their only multiple goal scorer kicking two. South Warrnambool's Ricky Henderson was one of their better players and their highest goal scorer kicking three, while Will White was their other multiple goal scorer kicking two, taking his season tally to 30. Back to Camperdown now, where the home side beat Portland by a comfortable 48 points. Sam Gordon was a welcomed addition back into the side, kicking four for the Magpies, helping them get the win, taking his season tally to 45, while Angus Gordon kicked three as well. Portland's Jake Wilson had a day out, kicking five of the Tigers' six goals. With only two games left, Portland can't make finals, but Camperdown have a slither of hope, needing to win their last two games, and will have to rely on percentage to get in. Over to Mortlake now, where the Bloods held off the Blues by 20 points. Will Kane was one of Terrain Mortlake's best players after kicking a bag of six to help elevate his side to the victory. Kane now takes back top spot on the goal kicker's leaderboard, sitting on 56, just two ahead of Port Ferry's Jason Rowan. Reese Buck also contributed to the scoreboard, kicking three, and James Chittick and Reggie Mars were Warnable's only multiple goal scorers, kicking two each. To the final game now, and we head out to Dunkale, where Hamilton hosted Croyd at the Dunkale Rec Reserve. Croy came away victors by a comfortable 64 points, still in their percentage no harm, which will benefit them come season's end. Miss Lloyd was one of their better players, kicking four for the away side, while Captain Liam Hoy also featured in the best during his 150th milestone game. Hamilton's Darcy Russell featured in the home side's best players after kicking three, taking his season tally to 33. And in the Western Victoria Female Football League, we saw South Warrnambool defend their crown in the under-18s grand final when they beat Terang Mortlake by a comfortable 48 points. South Warrnambool's Scarlett O'Donnell was best on ground with a commanding performance and a goal. In the seniors, Hamilton came away with the ultimate prize, beating South Warrnambool by 13 points, and Hamilton ruck Millicent Chun was awarded the best on ground honours after an impressive performance. And to the Hampton League Junior Finals, we saw South Warrnambool beat Hamilton in the under-14 Elim Final and North Warrnambool beat Warrnambool in the semi-final to see them advance to the Grand Final. In the under-16s, we saw Cobden beat Hamilton in the Elim Final and Croy beat South Warrnambool in the semi-final to advance through to the Grand Final. And over to the netball now, heading back to the friendlies over, we saw the top side and undefeated South Warrnambool have a close call, narrowly winning by two goals over North Warrnambool on their home court. The Roosters continue an undefeated run with only two games left. North Warren will sit in fourth, just half a game ahead of fifth. Over to Cobden now, and the second place Bombers handed Port Ferry quite a loss, beating them to the tune of 75 goals. Cobden can't lose their second spot on the ladder with three and a half games clear of second. Out to Mortlake now, and we had our second draw for the year. The Bloods and the Blues drew the game on 43 goals each. This keeps Warnable in fifth spot and a good chance at finals. However, this draw puts a line through Terang Mortlake's finals hopes. Over to Campanile now, and the Magpies secured their second win of the season, defending home court and beating Portland by seven goals. And to the final game, we head back to Dunkard, where the Saints were able to beat the home side by eight goals. Croyder in third spot with a game clear of fourth, while Hamilton sit in sixth, just a game out of that fifth spot. And to the junior finals, we saw Warrnambool beat Hamilton in the under-13s reserved elimination final, while South Warrnambool beat Croyd in the semi-final to advance through to the grand final. And in the under-15s reserves, Croy beat North Warrnambool in the Elim final and South Warrnambool beat Warrnambool to advance through to the grand final in the semi-final. And that's all from me, everyone. A huge weekend of footy and netball was had and the action will only get more packed as we approach the finals.